Hi guys, welcome to the teacher table. I'm your host, Octavia, and today we have on our show. Hi, I'm Jackie, and thanks for having me back. Welcome back. How are you? Um, I'm still quarantining. <laughs> I have not left my home since the first week in March, so I'm okay. I'm delirious a little bit, but I'm, but I'm, it's it's okay. <laughs> but you look good today. You look nice. Thank you. I yes, decided yes. that I would look decent just for today because normally <laughs> it gets really bad. I understand. I understand. Uh, Miss Jackie was on my first show and we were talking about realism in education. She got so many positive uh, reviews and I got a lot of compliments. So I want to thank you for that show, Jackie. It meant a lot. Thank you so much. All right. I'm, thank you. I'm so happy that you had me. You know, we, we always talk since working together just about different things yeah. and different views and some things that we we are mostly similar but it's just it was just really good mm -hmm. to hear that you have positive reviews i'm happy mm -hmm. that people you know um could understand where i was coming from so i'm happy that i'm not the only one only one to feel the way that i feel or the way that we do so no. i'm super happy to hear <laughs> no not at all so right. what what nuggets do you have for us today what do you want to talk about today Okay, so of course, you know, uh -oh. I have like a thousand things that I could literally talk about so okay. <laughs> many. Um, and I know that everyone has something to talk about. I just want to make sure I'm coming with realness, not just realness, but just like working in the environment, just straight up, this is what I've experienced. Everyone may not have experienced it or may not feel it, but I just want to talk about what I feel, whether it's good or bad. So I'm happy that we have this opportunity to do so. Oh, thank you. So today... Um, just the preparation, um, so I could call it grace over grades, just about what's happening right now with the pandemic since it's so prevalent. Just the pros and the cons and the things mm -hmm. that you know have happened with all of this and just how underprepared we are. And I, like, I feel like a lot of times when I'm talking, it's almost like it's a negative side, but it's really not the negative side, it's just the, it's just the real side. So if it were more positive, it would be, more positive kind of like that so right. just today just want to address some thoughts okay. about um just how we're handling the school systems are handling um the way the online e-learning basically okay okay so what are your thoughts about that how's that going so yeah. i just have like some pros and cons uh, about them because you, you know mm -hmm. as teachers go back and forth there's some days where we have highs there are some days where we have lows and we're all over the place with what has happened but it's just not us so i mean it's parents that's involved schools that are involved everyone students parents teachers everyone is involved governments everything so um i'll just start by saying with when i say grace over grades i'm 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 saying like i'm what i'm hearing and seeing i know definitely from my school is now we're trying to implement policies and e-learning things and i understand because you you do need some structure but i'm seeing more like a do more, do more, do more, do more, rather than an understanding and a slower pace at which this pandemic has brought us to a halt at which we should adhere to and think, okay, we have been slowed down. So how about we truly slow down mm -hmm. and take this time and think of things that make sense that will help us to be better. And it's kind of give and take to the word. Mm -hmm. So I would say some... I like to start with the negative first so that I can leave off on a good note. With okay. The, positive. I do the opposite, but I like to let me get the negative out. Okay. So that once we understand those things, we can see where we have gone and done some good things. I kind of like to end on a good note. And so, and Miss Jackie, I want to say I'm pretty sure you're speaking for the masses because I know pr this is probably a global issue. So thank right. you for putting I, it out here. I don't even know what you're going to say. Listen, guys, I don't know where this is going. So I'm excited to hear what she has to say. I'm trying to really get <laughs> some of my thoughts. I start rambling all over the place. We hear one thing and then we start saying some other things and then we forgot what we were saying the first time. Huh? It was crazy. <laughs> okay, I will say some cons of this online learning okay. is that the teachers are not trained. Now, because there are so many ed techs, that you can use to help you with class that teachers already use, it's not like it's completely new. Mm -hmm. But it is completely new when you are rushed into it <laughs> and you are, schools are having you to move from this platform to this platform to this platform, and you may not have, um, you may not have taught your kids certain platforms. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. they are rushed to the 
to do these things along with the parents. Mm -hmm. Like my school, we have moved from literally uh, dojo to Zoom, but then not Zoom because it's becoming hackable or mm -hmm. whatever. Then we've moved to not Teams, though we had Microsoft Office, but we don't use Teams. Oh. And then we moved to Google Classroom, you know, and, and then it's like, oh, then now you Seesaw. Oh, and we think about this. So there's so many of them that, and I don't know if other schools are experiencing this, but we need to find one, just one that works really well or, or two. Okay. Something now Dojo is a big one because I know kids are already using that and parents are really familiar with it. So if that's already in place, then let's keep using that for communication. But if we want to use another one for academics, then this yeah. just use one so they can learn it well. I don't, you know? personally, I, I can't really, see, I mean, I, it's working for Class Dojo, but I don't think it's really good for like more academics. I know Class Dojo was basically made for behavior. Um, so maybe if Class Dojo can take this moment to maybe scale it up a little bit or, right. you know, make a platform better for um, e-learning or distant learning, then that would be great. But yeah, yeah. Right. I definitely agree. Um, I was never a big fan of Dojo until like a couple of years back that my principal yeah, well, made it mandatory, which was fine Sorry. because I found it very easy to communicate. And you, even if you're in an older grade, even though I was in grade five, but even if you're in older grades, it's just really good for parents because they get that communication instantly. Mm -hmm. But you can choose to, you don't have to just sit there and click every little thing. You can choose how you, you know, send them whatever report. But yeah, Dojo wasn't, it's not good for heavy academics because the videos can only be so long mm -hmm. and um there's just certain features like trying to select different kids for different things like if i want to differentiate it's kind of different it's kind of mm -hmm. difficult to differentiate when you can't select certain students or you have to send an all posts or different things but i mean it may work for some maybe for the lower level kids it, it may you know work pretty well but like all these other ed techs or softwares um they're just, we just, we just don't have the proper training, um, to just go dive head in. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've had to do. Um, and also another con could be the lack of resources and materials that students have, parents have, and teachers have. Now that we're all home, maybe my printer was broken. I don't have one, or maybe I never got a chance to go get that printer, or I don't have that scanner or those, or some people who don't have access to internet. Mm -hmm. many different things or multiple devices if you have multiple kids at home and if the parent that is working at home has multiple doesn't have multiple devices but they need to work kids need to be online there's a lot of different things um that comes with the online learning um parents are not trained teachers not all of them some of some parents do homeschool and that's great but for the ones who are not trained and for the ones who have multiple kids and for the ones who are still working i can imagine the level of difficulty with that. You know, I have a son and I'm just mm -hmm. like, good thing he's with his dad right now because it'll yeah. be like chaos trying to make sure I'm right. doing all, helping him with his work and mm -hmm. doing my work with my kids. I can imagine having more than one kid. You know, I'm going to bring something up. I got to stop yeah. you. Hold your thought. But, you know, when you, you talked about lack of, res uh, lack of resources for the teachers and students, and you were talking about how, you know, the administration is, I don't know if you're going to get to this, but the administration is, you know, changing things up. Here's my question. What have they done? <laughs> Sorry. Now, now, you know, I'm no fan of the leaders. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, like, what have they done to, to, I, to have they done enemy. this? <laughs> Believe me, I'm their mortal enemy. I am no fan of leaders. I respect no, I know, them, no. yes. but I am no fan of but, them at all. And that Not is a question like to think about. Like, how are, you know, I know they're trying to have things in place, but have they systematically tried this out? Have they actually got into these platforms? You know what? Are they going based I'll, on reviews? Just keep I'll going. speak from my perspective first. So at my school, which I will not name, if you know my school, you have to find it, but I will not give you that name. But my school um, has not tested any of these um, oh. platforms that they want us to use. We've just had to fall in and dive and <laughs> break our necks the whole way. And good thing, most of them, we um, had, had already been using like Google Classroom, um, Dojo, we've already been using, but Seesaw was fairly easy to understand. But the thing is, they have been requesting and changing at a parent's request, at the board's mm -hmm. request, or whoever's request, except for the teachers. They have not listened to us. And what they've done is confuse the parents and the students 
even more because every time we come and have to add a new platform and get them to learn that when they have not even gotten on logged on or a good understanding or grasp of the uh, the previous platform they're 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 mad again and so i think that the leaders are also like we are they they also have to adapt so i do understand that for them and sometimes some leaders do have to follow directives from whoever is above them sitting on the board whoever owns it whatever whatever governing body so i do understand that they are also at a loss but to get back to your initial question i don't think a lot of them have a full grasp of everything and every platform that they are asking us to do and that is the major problem yet again with leaders you are not empathizing and you don't understand what you're asking but you want to say oh we, we we really appreciate you i don't want your appreciation i want you to understand and i want you to come and do what i'm doing so that you truly understand what it's taking for me to make sure everything is um done well you know and effective so i don't know so directly no they have not really uh they they don't know all the platforms that they are giving out to students or they don't take the time to learn them before they tell their teachers to use them yeah um Furthermore, just a few more cons, I would say, um, I, already, I already talked about the working parents and I know they're finding it very difficult, um, but the emotional wellness overall and mental health of everybody, mm -hmm. it, it, everybody is like jacked right now. You're, you're in the house, you, you, you don't know what can harm you. Um, right, you, some people may be in bad or negative environments, some people can be in a great place and still be emotionally unstable or unbalanced. Um, so a lot of that has, and that's not even things that are really school, school's problem. It's just the way that things are now. But um, a positive, so I go to the pros side, a positive thing about the emotional wellness and the mental health, I feel like because this pandemic has brought us to kind of to our knees and kind of like put us in check, like, hey, y'all need to calm down and chill out. I know the, anim the animals are like super happy and the earth. Yeah. I think that everybody um, has been like um, giving their all in a way. Like I, I can see a togetherness that everybody is building, like even with companies just making things free, um, people purchasing laptops for students and giving and and the companies extending um you know bill payments and things like that um i think that is a good thing even on a small scale it shows the resilience that we do have we don't practice it enough mm -hmm. i think but i think that you can see um that this is happening another thing is that i think some parents have been supportive because they have started to recognize and empathize with us about I their knew you were going to say that. <laughs> because you already know that's going to come up. Like, I like, knew you were going to say that. They know, like, one thing that I love to see is all the memes on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Just the, just the funny, wholesome memes yeah. to just let us know that they understand is really good because sometimes you got teachers who are mad, who are angry, teachers who are great, who are who are calm, who are shy, but you need to see that teachers, our goal is to teach. We're not here to be rude to your kids. And even though some teachers, I think they need to leave when they get to a certain point, a breaking point, but everyone has that breaking point. And there's an over, overwhelming number of students who are not being respectful. And this is not coming from a certain group. It's just all around in different ways. And we, we have been beat on and beat down with just trying to love our kids and teach them and still feel valued. And you know, that has kind of gone away. So I think with this, I think parents, and I'm hopefully after this is all done and we can go back to the schools, I hope that they now understand being with 30 kids in one class, making sure you cater to everyone's needs and everyone learns at a different pace, at a different time, on a different level, Different, different lifestyles, backgrounds, emotional wellness, and you mean to tell me that everybody is supposed to come out in tip-top shape? Mm -hmm. But that cannot, you, you're not in tip-top shape at your home with the people who's supposed to love you and care for you the most. So I hope that they see the value 
um, in, in teachers? Well, I wanted to say even, well, just going through a list of things I've noticed that they changed, how they've taken away standardized testing. Can this yes. stay gone? <laughs> like this would give teachers more like time to really focus on their classroom and their, their students. I think that is really a good thing. Um, standardized. I mean, there should be some kind of, you know, uh, test to see if the students have actually mastered a skill, but to have a standardized test at the end of the year, some kind of, no, no. I think at this, this time, is- like, you are so right. I definitely agree. Like, standardized tests, I, I don't mind standardized tests, criteria reference, whichever test you want to have. I think it's a great thing to have some standardized way of understanding what each right. child yeah. should know or what they are capable of doing in a grade level. That's excellent. The issue is making it a pass or fail because mm-hmm. you don't know what, how each child arrived and you don't know what each child knows mm-hmm. or what each teacher is teaching or how well how or, yep. effective or ineffective they are. That, that's, those are things that students can't control. Correct. You know, so I don't like the aspect of it yeah. because then the teacher doesn't really get to teach. We, we right. just teaching those four or five things. Teaching to and the they test. Don't learn, right, teaching to the <laughs> test and they don't learn anything else. So mm-hmm. the standardized test being gone is great. Even some of these inspections that are supposed to happen, we do need those, mm-hmm. but just kind of giving the, stu- the, the schools time to breathe a little bit is also good. Um, so I'm happy that, that, that they are gone and they kind of need to stay gone. <laughs> So I hope, like you said, if they can stay gone as long as possible. If you like this, please share this video. If you like that moment, share. (laughs) Right, like if you like you you think they need to stop it, you need to tell us. Pass it on, yeah. Yeah. Get the word out. I really Mm -hmm. um, standardized tests at this point should not be anywhere in anybody's um, vocabulary to talk about. Funding. We have bigger things than standardized tests. At this point, kids are not even... We don't even know if they're even getting learning effectively with what's happening to be doing standardized tests. Well, I know where I'm from in the U.S. Um, they're not even do. I don't think they're really doing e-learning. I think they're getting packets, if I'm not mistaken. That's it. They have a. I think they. I don't know if they email it or mail it. I don't know exactly, but they get a packet, and the packet is due by this date, and that's it. Wow, that's interesting. Now, we are doing live lessons. We were doing recorded lessons, and we just uploaded, and the kids had to get the work done by, like, 24 hours. Now, we're doing live lessons, and I actually like the live lessons because you still get to interact interact with your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, they get to interact and see their other peers. Mm-hmm. Um, we're using Google Meet right mm-hmm. now, and we've set our, um, we set our routines of how we're going to make it work. Um, it's really good. So I like the live lessons because you still get the teacher in front of you teaching. Because even with the recorded lessons, now the re- recorded lessons are more tedious because you have to re-record if you mess something up, if you say something wrong. So it gets very difficult. But with the live lessons, you can just go on as if you're literally right in front of them. Mm-hmm. You still prepare equally, um, but you can just talk to them and you can laugh a little bit. You can joke a little bit. You can make things just a little bit less mechanical. Mm-hmm. And um, I really, really, um, I really like the live lessons. Okay. So if we're not using live lessons. We like live I'll lessons. About <laughs> it. Yeah, try live lessons. And I know some people don't have access to the live lessons, but we record our live lessons and then we upload them to, do- to, um, to Google Classroom. Mm-hmm. And I know one thing about Google Classroom is um, if people don't know, you can download the Google Doc app if they have some type of phone and then it, uh, any type of phone and um, they can do Google offline. So they still should be able to access the work, okay. you know, offline or whatever. So if they don't have, you know, a, a steady um, internet stream or whatnot, or whatnot. But if I may add some things that I would like to see okay. um, happening this time. Yeah. Um, Help us I, out. I would like to see even more of everyone making the best uh, of what they have. Um, there are some people that are negative about everything and, and they, and everyone is entitled to their opinion because they, that something has made them feel that way basically. But if everyone could just keep making the best of what they have, that would be really good. Cause at this point, that's all we have. Like make the best of what you have, stay safe, you know, do what you can for your students or whatever position you're in. Um, I would say incorporating more tools, 
um, that are read readily available for students or things that they have access to. So if I'm doing some type of experiment or I'm doing some type of activity, I can say, hey, go, go get me a toilet tissue or go get me a, 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 um, a, a fork or a spoon or something that you feel like they would have. I, I know everyone doesn't have everything, but there are some general things that everyone pretty much has access to just to help them learn in the best way mm -hmm. so that everybody feels included. Um, even the special needs kid, we, we have our special, we have one SIN kid and we make sure and his parents make sure that he's in our live lessons. Even though we have a separate 30 minute time with him, he's make sure he's just in our live lessons every day, just so he can see the other students and he does follow along. So that, that really, his father really, really uh, appreciated that. Um, keeping the live classes, if you have them fun or whatnot, I, I, I keep my live classes fun and I'll get some ideas of how you can keep yours fun if you're not really sure. Um, and just another thing is being aware of others' situation and being genuinely concerned. That is what we need. Like, you want to have grace. That's why I call this grace over grace. You want to have some grace at this time for them. Like, if they miss an assignment, is it really going to kill you to reopen that assignment or send it to them? They could not be telling the truth. But at this time, we don't have time to think about what's the truth and what's not. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to say what anyone has or does not have. So um, just being lenient a little bit. Just being a little bit more understanding. Even when it's understanding with you for grading the papers. Just helping each other, all right? Being genu genuinely concerned for their mental and emotional wellness and academic. Um, another thing is from for the leaders, because you know what's coming up, the Here leaders to make things um, um, that we want to see, uh, maybe just less stress and less redundant work. I'm still at my school, I'm still seeing where we, we have all this technology, Google Classroom, which has progress reports. You know, you can put the grades in, it has a pr the spreadsheet for you to see all the grades, yet they still want, want us to send a progress report every two weeks. I'm like, but what's the point of having Google Classroom when we could just press, press click and the grades are sent to the parents? Right. So why am I doing a separate sheet to input marks when the marks are here on this system? They can go, they can see them. They Each kid has a portfolio. They can click the portfolio and see all the grades. They can see what's missing, what's turned in. So we're still being redundant, even though we have this technology, which technology is supposed to be ease of use mm -hmm. of, of, of any object to make, it's supposed to make our life easier. So if I'm not using paper and I'm using technology, then I need to use these, these techn technology, um, technology tools to, to better what we're doing, not to make it worse. Mm -hmm. And, and we need to have more hands-on leaders at this time. We need more support with learning. Like I don't need you issuing me more things to do and more more types of programs to use. I want to see you pop into my classroom, my live. I want to see you say, hey, let me pull these four kids for reading or, or for science or for math or for Arabic or Spanish, French, whatever you take. I That's what I want to see. They mm -hmm. need to see your faces. Mm -hmm. Although I know or, they're dealing with a lot of policy things. Or I, like, I like to see they could come in like on their social media page or their Facebook page. And, you know, if they can't do each classroom, maybe they can come in every morning and give like a positive, you know, message and, yes. you know, just this, something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But even with the positive messages, like I want to see them hands on down and dirty, getting to the work. Well, they can do that. Yeah. Right. Miss Jackie's class today, planet right. cacti. <laughs> I don't know. Right. That's what I want to see. But so I'll just end uh, the things that I want to see with this, just like we don't need at this point, because I'm starting to see this pop up, we don't need evaluation tools for e-learning. I don't need anything that's evaluating me because I need proper training and my students need proper training and their parents and need, you proper need proper training. training. Right. 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 And you leaders need proper, <laughs> proper training. training. Okay. Right. That's what Reboot we over the summer. <laughs> right. I mean, like all of, like you cannot evaluate, like you want to have, like they always say, oh, the um, backwards assessment, backwards planning. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't even, you can't evaluate anything right now because you don't even know what it looks like. Right. You don't even, I mean, we just were thrown, we were just like, go online learning. You know, a lot of us have done great with it, but we don't like for school, we have a framework and an understanding of what it looks like. So we can say, hey, I'm gonna, back, I'm gonna do a backwards planning with this. I'm gonna, I think this is what the assessment needs to look like, but we already know what the overall scheme of things look like. But for, for online learning, we don't know. Cameras on, cameras off. Um, you don't wanna see anyone's background. 
Oh, well, you need to be on for this long. Oh, only so you don't want to look at the screen too many long. Maybe kindergartens don't need to be on live. Or maybe recorded lessons don't give them enough interaction. There's so many different things. So right now, don't give me, don't try to evaluate me on anything. I need your support and I need you to help me get through this. So when we under, so now if we just observe, I only need your observations. You only need to observe what's happening right now. So after this school year is over, through your summertime, in which you need to use, use it wisely, then you can start planning, do a backwards planning for mm -hmm. e-learning. And that way you can start saying, hey, maybe we're gonna do three days a week in school, like traditional school, and two days a week we're gonna do online learning while the students are in school. That way, if this ever happens again, we're not mm -hmm. caught with our underwear down. Right. <laughs> you know? So um, one thing I would say, uh, I'd just like to add, and I will be finished, you know, talking about my grace over grades. Um, things that I do with my class that I think um, I like to share, um, if, if anyone wants to use them, or, you know, if you're doing something else, you can always add to the comments and share so that we can see them. And I definitely like to, you know, um, see what everyone else is doing and use it in my class. Um, I use memes, so we usually have like a morning meeting, and instead of having morning meeting, I have morning memes every class since we're doing live, and I project them through Google Meet. And I have like three memes, funny school memes, and I always ask the kids like, which one are which one are you? Like I had a meme where you come in the school on Monday looking like a zombie, and then you pop out, you know, you're all excited on Friday. So we just joke and laugh, and that usually helps them wake up. You know, it helps them, you know, just smile and kind of relax for the day. And then I have a right now challenge. And basically, it doesn't happen every day. I try to skip some days. So basically, I, I just tell everybody, everyone needs to, I just say, look, everyone needs to participate. We're all at home. We don't get to see each other. You need to participate. It'll make it fun. It'll make the class go by fast because we have an hour classes and 40 minute, 45 minute classes. And so I have the right now challenge where one day I had, everyone had to wear a silly hat. I had like a pot on my head. Someone had on like a wig. Someone had on masks. Some little boy like folded up tissue and stuck on his head. It was just really great. And they were so excited. And then the next class are like, we have a right now challenge. You know, so I just add in little things like that to make them laugh and have fun, you know, before we get into the work. So if anyone has any other things, definitely add it. But those are some things that I do to kind of help and the kids really like it. That's awesome, Jackie. Maybe we can put a picture of your, cover your students' faces, but put your picture so they can see it. I actually have a picture of me with a pot on my head. I can yeah, I've seen it. it. You showed right. it. So, yeah. I will. <laughs> well, Jackie, I thank you so much. I do um, have some questions for you based on, on your, our interview. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask you was, you mentioned, um, like, when you went from the video, um, sending a video, and then you went to the live videos, how did your students' energy change, or how did they change, or did you get any, pot, like, their feedback from that? Were they excited? Um, I would say that I feel like their energy changed. I feel, like, I feel like the live classes, the energy became more. It was better because um, I had less students do, doing the recorded lessons work. Because I would record the lessons and upload it to Google Classroom, and then I have the attachments there. But I feel like I got more work in the live lessons when we started live lessons. Um, because they could interact and, and, and have more fun. And I can explain more. So I can explain on the spot versus them watching the video and then them having to type me a message in um, Google Classroom and then you have to respond back awesome. that way. With, through the live, they could talk to me. And then now we have like weekly meetings scheduled for each kid to kind of talk to them if they have questions. So the energy level went way up. It really Yay. did. And a lot of parents have responded and said that they actually are enjoying the live lessons. Oh, and they can see and they're in the background yeah, they can see and they can watch too. Yeah, especially if they're working too, like they just to give them a chance to step aside and kind of focus on the things they need to do as well. Okay. Um, any more questions? Uh, how do you feel? What are some strategies you would like to implement for administration? And I don't know if you discussed that, but like, especially like, you know, for one is I am about to participate in this co this technology conference with like um, Microsoft and um, who else? It's Hulu is like a top conference. It's not actually related to education, but it's dealing with technology. So for me, I feel like 
they kind of need to get into something like that, like trying to figure out like what's, you know, especially the leaders in education. I don't know who, I don't even know who leads the education system globally. Is there a global education system? You know what? Um, I don't know, but I've, I've been talking about that with someone else. Like, can we get like an international board certified? Yes. Council? yes. I don't know. Yes. Something, yes. somebody who's regulating. <laughs> yes, clearly it's like state regulated. by state. You know, um, country by country, but at the same time, we all are still doing the same thing. We're still right. learning and we're still, so I was just wondering, like, what do you think the admin or leaders should do? Are there any I think that they really just need to sit down themselves and go through every platform that they're asking their teachers to use. Mm -hmm. they, need to, um, they need to learn it from a leader's perspective. They need to look at it and learn it from a teacher's perspective. Mm -hmm. They need to look at it at a parent's perspective and as a student. So they need to understand what the students see and they need to know what the, what the teachers see. Mm -hmm. um, and they also need to take those um, notes that they take and take them to these conferences and speak to the people like Google, like Google Classroom. There are some features that we're, like, we're like, why is this not working? Or Google Meet. Like when, you, when you're in Google Meet, like kids can, you can put them in the group or you can add them to your class. but they can leave the class and pop in when they feel like it. You can't even oh. keep them from coming back in, from entering. So that those are major disruptions. You can, yeah. you can mute them, but, they, but you can't unmute them. They can unmute themselves. So they can unmute whenever they feel like it during your class. So there's a lot of features, or when you present something in Google Meet, the presentation sound doesn't work. It's like, what? Did you not realize? So it's like, if the leaders were really understanding these platforms, they would know what things to help the companies to improve. Mm -hmm. Although it's the company's job to go through the design process and improve the stuff uh -oh. yourself. Here we go. But <laughs> let me get started. But, um, but those are some things that leaders should be kind of sticking to saying, hey, my school, we purchased this software from you. So we don't have access to these things or we need access to, the, to these things or we want to know why were these features not included because it's not conducive to what we need to happen. I think that's what they should be doing, not going to just go, oh, I went to this conference, I was there, I did this, I met this person. No, what about, what are you relaying that's gonna help your school to improve? Correct. That's what they should be doing. Right. Is there anything else you would like to say? You did awesome. Beautiful. Thank uh, no, you. you know, this is kind of, I love talking to you, but it's kind of weird because nothing is really planned. Yeah. We just kind of go, and just talk so you know how you just want to make sure that you're not rambling and you answer no, the question no you did amazing. Like, oh god let me answer the questions and not ramble because it can get really really crazy but no, no i feel like for the most part um i've said some things that i think could help others some things that i've been thinking and some things that have been happening at my school and just hoping that you know there are others who can empathize with what i'm saying and and, and if they're going through the same things they can take something from it all right, thank you. I, we, I think we all can. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a global thing. And I thank you for just putting your voice out there. And I thank you for, you know, making me get ready for this, <laughs> for this YouTube video right. slash so Zoom this call. Is my, literally, this was my first day in literally like seven weeks of looking decent. Like I had like the two cornrows with my hair and, um, my friend was like, oh, you look like Cleo from Set It Off. I was like, okay, let me hurry up and just kind of take up. down my hair and make it fluffy a little bit so I can look a little de decent. So I, at least I feel like myself. Yes. But yes. after this, I'm going to go back and put my cornrows right back. Well, we, have, we will have many more. So thank you right. so much. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you. I'm just going to go ahead and just thank you, everyone, for watching this. I hope this is something that you really enjoy. Please like, subscribe, and share. And Again, please comment anything or any comments you want to have, please comment below. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.